everlasting Father, Almighty God. We thank you because of your presence in our midst. You gathered us here this evening for a purpose. The time has come for us to hear the word of life. Father, speak to our hearts. Give us listening ears, hearts of understanding. Above all, make us to be doers of the word. We pray that nothing will hinder the flow of this message, nothing to distract our attention. At the end, your name will be glorified. Thank you, precious Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, we are grateful to God for our gathering this evening. For the time we have, our message is entitled, Focus on God and not Material Things. Focus on God not and not material things. Brethren, the message this evening enjoys us to focus on our Creator, not on material things not on things that are created. Let us focus on God, the Almighty, the owner of everything. Brethren, it is foolishness for humanity to focus on materialism or material things. There is a reason why God wants us to focus on Him instead of the things created. We'll read from Psalm 24 verse 1. Psalm 24 verse 1. We are reading from the book of Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Brethren, you see, the earth and the fullness thereof, they belong to God. If we are wise, we should try all what we can to have a very robust relationship with God, our Maker. First and foremost, it is in this God that we have our salvation eternal life. It is in him, the earth, and the fullness thereof, and anything man will ever desire in life, they come from him. The earth and the fullness thereof belongs to God. Brethren, this is a very important thing that we need to know. What we should endeavor to do is to ensure that we are his heirs. As many as believed him, he gave them power to become sons and daughters of God. Once we become a child of God, all that our Father owns belongs to us. This is the reason why we should focus on God. Everything God owns on earth, in the entire world, they belong to us because we are His heir. It will be foolishness for us to begin to attack those areas. Oh, we have need of this. We have need of that. Once you are, your heart is in tune with God, once you are his child, everything belongs to you. Brethren, it is important that at every, any material time in, in our life that we belong to God. Everything that our God owns, there will be our own. Why will you not endeavor to make him your God? So that everything he owns belongs to you. That is what God wants us to note this evening. Everything God owns he is the owner of wisdom. He is the owner of skills. He is the owner of ability. And all powers belong to him. So, why will you go to someone else? There is no other person, uh, there is no other person in whom we can find all that we will ever need in life. It is our God only. So, if we are wise, let us do all we can to ensure a robust relationship with God. Once we have, we are at peace with him. Once we are his children, we don't need to bother again. We can talk to him boldly. Father, I need this. Father, I need that. And above all, eternal life. Brethren, this evening, let us make a, 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 a turn around from wherever we have been going to for our heart's desires, for our needs. He has promised us that he will supply all our needs. There is nothing mankind will ever want that he cannot get from God. Anything God cannot give us, we should not deserve for such things. All of us, we are his stewards. We are his caretakers. The things God has given to us, we should not begin to worship them. This is the problem of mankind. We are now worshiping those things that God created and we don't worship God alone. Brethren, that is the foolishness of man. If we know 
that these things belong to God. We will worship God, do all what we can to ensure a robust relationship with him. Then we become his heirs. We don't need to fight for this. We don't need to fight for that. Brethren, the earth and the fullness thereof and all the persons the, and all them that dwell therein, they belong to God. And that is your father. Whatever you can do to ensure you have this relationship, brethren, let us do it. Let us do it. Whatever God has given to us, he has given to us as caretakers. They belong to him. When you think all the money I have in the bank, they belong to me. All the building houses and things, they belong to me. No, they do not belong to you. You are a mere caretaker. If they belong to God. So don't begin to worship those things. Supposing God withdraws those things from you, what will you do? The owner takes them. We have seen people who amassed wealth, who had wealth, and what, in whatever form they made their wealth, they began to worship the wealth. They no longer think about God. They think the wealth is all they need in life. But over time, they lost the wealth. Things changed. We have seen people who were driving two, three cars. After some time, they began to drive keke. People who were importers. But over time, condition changed. This is to let you know that whatever God has given to you, he has merely made you a caretaker. Take care of these things. And don't use those, use those things to the best of your ability to worship him. Don't say, oh, the skill I have, the knowledge I have, the wisdom I have, you begin to pride yourself in them. No, that will not suffice, brethren. The earth and the fullness thereof, everything you can find, even people you know, it is just by the grace of God. So let us worship God. Let us focus on him and not on the things he has uh, created. Let us become devoted in worshiping God and not worshiping the things that he has given to us. We are mere caretakers. We are so prop uh, proprietors because this world that we see, they will pass away. They will pass away. So when you focus on these material things, time will come that you may not find them again. But if you hold on to God, if you focus on God, you have lost nothing. Even if you, uh, people will leave you, even if people will desert you, you are holding God. Hold on him steadfastly. You have not lost anything. Because when you hold him, he owns every other thing. You can now ask him, Father, I need this. When you see politicians, somebody wants to become governor of a river state. He wants you to go to Obiapo local government and fight and struggle so that he can conquer them, win them over and become their lord. He will go to Portacot City Council, fight and become the head. He will go to uh, other local governments, fight them. But a wise person will just say, I want to be governor of this state. He will fight for the governorship of River State. Once you secure that position as a gov the governor of River State, all these other local governments will come under your control. You don't need to fight individually to secure then a wise person will just vie for the governor of River State. Brethren, in the same way, let us ensure we have good relationship with God. All these other things will be added unto us. Psalm 84 verse 11. Psalm 84 verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Brethren, we have seen our own God. The Bible has described him. Because God's own, God owns everything, he will not deny any good thing from those who are committed in worshiping him. He will not withhold any good thing from them. Those who do what is right, in the eyes of people, it may appear you are doing the wrong thing. But those who do what is right, God said he will not withhold any good thing from them. That is why we should ensure we have good relationship with our God. Once we have this good relationship, he will not be told any good thing from us. Why don't you endeavor to have good relationship with our God? Why don't you ensure you, you are in good books 
with the captain of our salvation, so that he will not withhold any good thing from you. Brethren, this is what God wants us to know. God does not promise to give us everything you know, uh, we need, everything we desire. Everything we desire may not be the best for us. He will give us that which will uh, uh, promote us, that which will do good to us, not what will bring trouble or problem for you. What is desired of us is to acknowledge him in all, all our ways. He will not withhold any good thing from us. He will give to us in the fullness of time. That is why, brethren, we need to have good relationship with God. Your dependence on God lessens your dependence on things that he has created. When you, when you depend on God, you will no longer depend on things that have been created. You will no longer depend on man for protection. You will no longer depend on man for provision. You will no longer depend on man for favor. Because everything comes from our God. That is what the Bible says. And that is why this evening the world is coming to us. Everything God has created is for our own use. Is for our good. Those ones that are expedient for us, he will give to us. He will grant us the use of them. But do you have good relationship with God? Why are you wasting your time pursuing sh shadows instead of going to the fountain from where you get? We read a story recently of a Nigerian who picked up $50,000. An Okada rider who picked up $50,000. And he told his friend, he gave to his mother, keep this money for me until I find the owner. He told his friends, they said, no, don't do that. God has blessed you. God has buttered bread for you. He said, no, I wouldn't do it. And he kept it, the money until the day he heard that there's, uh, someone lost $50,000. And they made co contact and told the person, I will bring the money to you. And he did. And the person gave him $1,500. He took that happily and went to embed the news spread. Today he is a celebrity, as it were. Government has taken him up. The government of Ghana has given him, offered him scholarship to go back and bought two good Okada for him. And they gave him scholarship. Another school has taken him up for him to finish, do his uh, secondary school. A uh, foreign university has granted him admission free. Uh, another, other companies won't have made them their good ambassador. They are ready to employ him once he finishes. Brethren, just by returning 500,000, focusing on God for our blessing, not on material things. Many people today wouldn't have done that. And it has fetched him 20 times over. And also, good, his name is known today. Brethren, that is what it takes to focus on God. Focus on him for your blessing. He said he will not deny any good thing from those who fear him. Let the fear of God be in your life. Let your focus be on God. If you take that little one, after some time, you will exhaust it. And you will begin to be in lack. It will not last forever. Brethren, let us focus on God. That is the proper thing we need to do. And that is why this message is coming to us this evening. To learn to focus on God. To depend on Him. God wants His people to depend on Him. Not on possessions. Otherwise, it becomes idolatry. When you focus on things that are created, it becomes idolatry. People worship money. People worship wealth. But it's not supposed to be so. Undue love for materialism. Brethren, is idolatry. You have greater trust and focus on things that have been created somebody is ready to give his life that is why today you see greed for materialism people become robbers for materialism you see people going on into prostitution for materialism people go become yahoo boys and girls 419ers because they want to make it without hard work but when we focus on god the blessing that comes from God. No sorrow is added to it. And that is really the one that will bless your life. Deuteronomy 8, 13 and 14. Of Deuteronomy chapter 8, we are reading verse 13 and verse 14.
and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be filled up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Yes, brethren, that is the word of God. God told the children of Israel, you will be blessed. You will get out from where you have been suffering. But he said, remember, not after you have been blessed, not after your wealth multiplies, you will forget the God who brought you out from the land of Egypt, her land of suffering. Before they entered Canaan, he told them, remember, you have been suffering. You have been in bondage under your taskmasters. Now you are going to inhabit goodly houses. You are going to have peace. Do not forget that God who has brought you out from the land of bondage, from the problems and difficulties. Brethren, this is what we see in life today. In times of plenty, we often take the credit. Oh, it was our wisdom. It was, we become proud because of prosperity. Oh, it was because I know this business well. It's because I am well connected. That is why I have not gone so far. Brethren, it is not so. It is my cleverness. I know I'm very smart in this area and that area. Brethren, it is easy to get busy chasing our wealth, controlling our wealth that we forget God who has given to us. At such points, coming to church, it will become just once a while. And even at the times we come, we will come late because we have very important business meeting. We forget God. Remember, God says, those who honor me, I will honor. But those who despise me, I will despise them. The closer we go to our God, the better for us. But when we stay away, because we think we don't need to pray again. After all, I have all I need. I don't need to pray again. I don't need to worship him again. Remember, you are a mere caretaker. You are not the landlord. The wealth belongs to God. The wisdom belongs to him. It can be withdrawn. Remember the, uh, the uh, farmer who said, Oh, I have amassed wealth. I will increase my barn. There was no focus on God. He didn't say, Oh, my wealth has increased. I am going to do this for God. I am going to bless the work of God. He said, No, I will build a big barn. I will expand the one I have. I will store my riches. And I will say, oh soul, stay back and rejoice. For many years, many people have stolen. Many people have plundered, embezzled funds belonging to community, belonging to government. And they say, oh, it is now time. Even if I don't work in the next 20 years, even if I begin to spend one million every month, I have all that I need. But brethren, how long did they stay? Some will be spending this money in, in, in hospitals. They will not have peace. But when God has blessed you, the little that God has given you, you will enjoy it, you will have peace. And there will be rest of mind. Brethren, that is why we need to focus on God, not on material things. Those who focus on material things, many have been deceived. Many have joined uh, uh, occult, uh, cult, uh, cultist groups so that they can make money. Someday we say, bring this one. Bring this your relation. Bring this your parent. Bring this your child. God forbid. And some they do it, they get their money. Then some they say, you will not have this. You will not have that. Recently, a, a, a boy of 20 years bought Mercedes 350 GLK, costing millions for a young girl, for his girlfriend. And while he was making the presentation, they were throwing bundles of money into the air. And people who know what is happening say, oh, this girl's life is just filtering away. Because they have focused on material things. We should be careful not to follow the world around us. Brethren, let us focus on God and not on material things. So that the wealth will become useful to us. Don't remove your focus from God onto material things. They will not last. The Bible has said that the earth and all that is in it will be given to fire. X has been marked on this earth for demolition, for destruction. So let our focus be on God, 
because it's in him that we have eternal life. All these other things which has deceived the humanity, they will be given to fire. Brethren, we are mere caretakers. God's principles have not changed. God's principles have not changed. We read from Matthew chapter 6, 31 to 33. Matthew 6, 31 to 33. The gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 31 to verse 33. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that he have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Brethren, we have seen that God has not changed. Seek God diligently, and you will find him and all these other things you need. All these other things you desire, seek God first. Focus on God. Hold him steadfastly. All these other needs, all these other desires will become additional. When you become governor of River State, all the local governments will come under your control. When you become a true child of God, when you seek and find his kingdom, all these other things will be added unto you. They will become additional. That is what God says. They will become additional things to you. But the principal thing is the kingdom of God. Brethren, that is why the message is coming to us this evening. Check your life. If you have left God, if you have left him, come back. All these other things will become additional. Seek God. The bottom line is that you are depending on God, not on the things he created. God does not want us to worship what he has created instead of worshiping him. That is a disrespect to our God. Don't worship the things that have been created. Worship God and Him alone. Depend on Him. Don't worry about the things. People who do not know God. People who do not have God. The things that they bother themselves about. You shouldn't follow them to bother yourself. All you need to do is to have good relationship with God. Focus on Him. Worship Him. Obey Him. Be loyal unto Him. All these other things will become yours. Brethren, you see, God's way is very simple. God's way is quite easy. God does not tell you when you pray, bring one egg, bring tortoise egg, bring one fowl. No, just kneel and pray unto him. Be committed, be sincere in your heart. When you call upon him, he will hear and he will answer you. He says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you that you may glorify me. So call upon God. Tell him your need. As simple and as easy as that, God will honor his word and grant you your heart desire. Only by being loyal to him, all these other things will become yours. But when you focus on getting this, focus on getting that, you will put your hands into something you will regret at last. Remember, the devil has no good gift for anyone. What the devil gives you today, he will exact more from you tomorrow. He will give you today so that he will convince you he can give you something. The devil has no good gift for anyone. If he has good gift, he won't give to you. And so, this evening, the message says, focus on God, not on material things. The material things they are ephemeral. They will not last forever. But only those who hold on to our God will endure and will theirs will last forever. Go back to where we read in Deuteronomy chapter 6, chapter 6, now verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8, now verse 18. Of Deuteronomy chapter 8, we are reading verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which is swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. Brethren, you will remember to worship the Lord your God. It is he that giveth us power to get wealth. It is not the devil. The devil cannot give you power to get wealth. People who have tried, they got their fingers burnt. And that is why God is saying, focus on God. 
He gives eternal life. He gives you wisdom. He teaches you skill. And he gives you power to get wealth. You can see that everything is complete in, G in, in our God. He owns everything. Wisdom. Even the power to, make, to get wealth comes from God. Why should we go to another? Why should we focus on another? When God himself gives us the power to get wealth. Brethren, this is why this message is coming to us this evening. Many have been deceived. There is nothing, anything you would desire in life, you will get them from God. There is nothing you can get anywhere else except from God. It is he that gives you power to get wealth. And he makes you caretaker of the wealth. Keep this wealth. Disburse it the way I have told you. And if you honor him and you disburse the wealth, the way God has given you instruction, the wealth will last. But when you get the wealth and you hold on to them, you begin to worship the wealth. You will not give out. The wealth will perish with you. And God will also find another channel. Remember, we are mere caretakers. When you think you have become too wise, God will close that channel and open another channel. God does not lack people. He has all that he needs to do his work. So let us focus on God. When we focus on God, we have all. But when we focus on material things, we lose all. Brethren, this is God's word to us this evening. Whatever you need, remember the world and everything in it and every material in this world, they will pass away. But he that doeth the will of God, he will last forever. Hold on to God and he will give you everything. He gives you health. He gives you wealth. He gives you wisdom. He gives you skill. He gives you peace. He gives you skills and any other thing you would desire. It is God that provides life partners for his people. When you want to do it in your own wisdom, it will backfire. So that is why we should focus on God for every need. It is God that blesses us. It is God that grants all our needs, all our desires. There is none God cannot give. He said, look, my God, he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus the Lord. There is nothing removed from it. Nothing is removed. He will give you. You say, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Whatsoever. Nothing is removed. The God gives total blessing. The God gives blessing. He will save your soul and he will also give you what you want. Physical and material blessings. They come from God. In James, he says, for every good and perfect gifts. James chapter 1 verse 17. Of James, we are reading chapter 1 verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Brethren, you have seen every good and every perfect gift comes from God. Why will you go to worship man? Why will you go to worship things that are created to give you what your father will freely give you? Unless he is not your father. If you have made him your father, it is not also by proclaiming it, but it is by your loyalty to him, doing what he asks you to do. Our hymn says, what he says, we will do. Where he sends, we will go. Whatever the need, just put your trust in him. Whatever you cannot get, go to our God, what you can get elsewhere. Be loyal to him, worship him, serve him alone. No divided loyalty. And he will give to you. Every good and perfect gifts come from him. Something your father can give you at home. You go to the road to begin to beg people. Let me come and do this for you so that you go to my father and bring this thing and give to me. That is the foolishness of man. If we have good relationship with God, we can walk to our father and say, Daddy, this is what I need. He will give to us. But look at what it looks like. What mankind is doing today. What my father will give to me. I will go and steal it. I will go and shoot people. And get that which my father would have given to me freely. But when we are his, we become his heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. All that we will ever need, he will give to us. Every good, every perfect gift, whatever you want from God. That is good. He will give it to you. Only by your becoming a loyal child of him. So brethren this evening the message says. 
Focus on God and not on material things. Material things will end, but your relationship with God will continue. And the utmost of it is eternal life. Hold on to it. The wealth, he teaches you to get wealth, and he makes you a caretaker. Honor God with whatever he has given to you. Is it wisdom? Is it skill? Is it wealth? Is it money? Whatsoever God has given to you, honor him. There are people who are struggling to get to your position. Oh, if God makes me to become this, oh, I will do this and do that for him. What have you done for God, for what he has given to you? The wealth, the skill, the wisdom, the knowledge he has given to you. Some will begin to use that little wisdom to attack God, to begin to fight him. Some will use the little wealth God has given to them. They say, ah, I don't need anything again. They begin to fight God with the little wealth given to them. Brethren, that is why this message is coming to us this evening. Focus on God in whatever you're doing. Put God first. Let the first consideration be God. Oh, let me not do what will offend God. Oh, how am I going to expand the kingdom of God through my loyalty or through my obedience? When we do that, our wealth will expand. The kingdom of God will expand. God will be happy with us that what he has given to us, we addition them out the way he wants. You see, the wealth will grow when we manage what God has given to us. When we know that we are mere caretakers, our landlord will send, send us, give 1,000 to this person, give 500 to that person. There's a war going on somewhere. Go and put 10 naira there. You are only a caretaker. Unless we understand ourselves that we are mere caretakers, we say, no, this is my money. This is my wealth. This is my this and that. And when we are doing this, we are offending God because we are worshipping what God has given to us instead of worshipping God. That is why you see wealth going away from people. That is why you see skillful people. Clients will begin to abandon them. You, see, you begin to ask what is happening and the devil will tell you it was that woman you shook that day. Is that your cousin at home? They must have done something against you. It is because you neglected God. You began to worship that skill. You began to worship the, wis uh, the wisdom God has given to you. Or the money or wealth God has given to you. You will withdraw and you begin to fight other people. Brethren, let us hearken unto God's word. Focus on God in everything you do. Put him first in everything you do. And you will not be the same again. He will bless you. He will prosper your doings. And he will save you. He grant you eternal life above all. And you will enjoy peace with him. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts. In Jesus name. Amen.